I am very excited to be here with one of my favorite musicians of all time, icon, Mr. Peter Murphy. Peter, thank you so much for being with us here today. You're welcome. Yeah. Welcome. And we are here. San Luis Obispo. San Luis Obispo. And uh, we're in an interesting venue right now. It's actually, we're, we're playing um, a theater. It was uh, opened on the eve of Second World War. This is what I understand. It's um, Fremont Theater. I think it's got its original deco type of painting on the ceiling and stuff like that. Which nice. is, it's got a very nice energy. And these shows are mostly, I think, seated venues. Okay. okay. Not that I, I specified that, but uh, it seems to work really well because this is, you know, we're playing kind of um, what's called strip, but in a sense, mm -hmm. people would imagine that it's just a very bare bones acoustic set. Yeah. But it's not actually. It's actually quite quite arranged but in in a very minimal way okay. Okay. So, so so though it is bare bones and mm -hmm. uh, very empty in a, set, a lot of space around the songs and they are very simple versions of of songs yeah. uh it's sort of yesterday was you know the first show and during the rehearsal i mm -hmm. i envisioned it to be like it was and it and it turned out to be uh, very powerful in a way that was not reliant on uh the sometimes bombastic, full-on sound and arrangement. Yeah. No pyrotechnics, obviously, for last no, in night. In terms of the performance, yeah. not lights or anything. Yeah. Um, never had pyrotechnics, <laughs> thank God, never. You know, the singer is featured in, not not mm -hmm. highlighted, but mm -hmm. it gives space for to listen wow, okay. to everybody. So I'm playing with three, two people, Emilio China, uh -huh. who, who's on electric, acoustic, uh -huh violin and bass. I work with Emilio because he, he's able to um, provide orchestration that, that's, that, that's electrified and um, treated uh, rather than to, to play straight keyboards. Okay. So the, the, there's that organic interactive quality to it. Emilio works with me on Lion. Yes. So he, he came in to play over the top after we had you know, done all the arrangements and um, he's a great player like that. I mean, he can improvise on In fact, when you know, Youth and I, when we, Youth w is the producer of Lion, when yeah. we were, we got Emilio and it was almost, everything was done in that sense, but we, we, were, we wanted that element on top. <laughs> We, we flew him to Spain and he'd, he'd been traveling for so long. He said, okay, so run the track, please, run the first track. And he was just like listening and tuning up to it. And uh, you said, yeah, that's great, thanks, next track. So I said, wait a minute, I haven't, uh, but it was great. So that, that's how we work, we, we, we kind of capture stuff. Now you can play with it. And so, so Emilio features over it without really knowing what he did. Yeah. And now, now, now he's relearning that, which is, has relearned that. But it, it's, so, and John Andrews, who has his own band called Loud Boy, but he, he played, he was in the, the, the band that I put together for the studio recording of Ninth. Okay. And he's a guitarist, electric guitarist, but he also has this, one of those rare type who really plays the acoustic guitar okay. wow. rhythm in a way that you can, it feels, he's got a feel to it. And that's not easy. That isn't, yeah. It's not just about timing mm -hmm. it's also about dynamic of course it is but uh that's not so i mean that really works yeah, that's and both emilio and john sing so i can now bring in some harmonies which i i always do myself and arrange yes. myself that um isn't always possible get a little back up from the boys yeah there well those are important on some songs so, so it's a bit like if you've listened to the beatles or everly brothers say for instance i mean just to, to where where harmonies are really feature or Beach Boys, those harmonies make the, the final pastiche of mm -hmm. the vocal. Mm -hmm. It isn't just harm harmony. It's just just an extra vocal to back you up yeah. to help you. It's like I sing them to to create a certain resonance. You know, a harmony. Yeah. Yeah. So that that's present on some songs. It's really nice. So it's it's quite empty. And the audience last night I played for two hours and there was no. But no let up of attention, which is exactly what I was aiming for. It, what, so hopefully that will happen on the whole tour. I want to talk to you about the tour, Peter, because um, again, 31 legs, um, looking at the slate, I mean, I think there's only one or two or three days in the next month that you guys actually have off. I mean, it's, uh, you know, the, the cliched term whirlwind tour. I think that's pretty applicable here in terms well, of I just... Mean, uh, yes, you're quite right. I've, uh, well, the, the nature of the music industry, of course, I've never really... Like, I may be well known, but I'm not a 
uh, such a stage where I can command full production because of the fiscal economic aspects of touring as much as anything else yeah. it has forced me to, to really go on a, on a bare bones production level so I, for instance I don't carry my lights around uh -huh. anymore but that will come again hopefully but I mean even though you know the tour is selling out well, the what they call the economies of scale you know we do a lot of interviews with musicians and in the last couple of years so many musicians we've talked to the the need to get out there and connect with the fans um, through ticket sales merchandise um, yes. and and other more traditional methods no, of support that's always happening yeah. with every artist that has yeah. to be because that's the you know the source of income of course it is whatever level you're at it, it's it's it has to be unfortunately one has to put one's mind to it at the end of the day it's really all about that two hours on stage that's what it's geared towards for me it's not the, the onus isn't the isn't the necessary and absolute I mean don't don't imagine that in in the 40s 30s 20s 1970s everything there wasn't happening it was even more so then okay. there was there was like money being thrown around like nobody's business you know, the problem was you know the artists didn't yeah. often see all of it but uh in terms of touring and the you know the amount of shows yeah, yeah it is like that and I, I've been touring for the last five years really hard uh and yeah you know, you get used to it, but there's a point at which that compromise has to stop, and that's my business. But at the end of the day, we're we're seeing the audience. This is not just about you know the 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 mercantile element mm -hmm. at all. Yeah. It's well, really yeah. driven towards the performance and what you're doing for the audience with the audience. So that that stays still, of course. Definitely, and, and on the strip tour, I mean, the sort of uh, intimacy, perhaps, of it, do you find that there is a little bit more, you feel a little more connected to the audience on a, a tour such as this? I feel connected to an audience every show I do. I mean, ev even if I play to 50,000, I reach okay. the you know, you know, 50,000th person right at the back. Okay. No, no, that's very important, and yeah. that's about the performance element, and that's what I am. That's, that's my art in a sense so even though it's music it's sort of it has a it has like like a uh i don't know how to describe this because you know the language in rock is mm -hmm. very different it's um i shouldn't be saying this but there are very f few and far between great singers okay. and those who connect and so intimacy is always going to happen with that yeah, yeah. Uh, so it doesn't need, need a small room or you know, you find people to be intimate. You can be, you can reach the eyes and and the soul of of a person, five hundred yards away. Yeah. You know what I mean. Definitely. So that that's always present. Definitely. But what's nice about this is that the audience are allowed to not have to have to respond in a way that's uh, reflexive, as in terms of oh this is where I clap and this is what I should do and I'm a fan and I like this song. They stop and they go oh this is that song and and they listen. So again, you see, yeah. so that's that's the point. It's not about churning, repeating oneself because every time we play a song, it's new, it's fresh. It has to be. Definitely. Well, Peter, I have another question, and, and and this is you know one that I think rings uh, really uh, to the core of many of us as music fans. Um, when we're talking about artists, uh, the the few sort of golden ones out there that have been able to connect with fans. Of course, uh, a couple months ago, sadly, the untimely uh, passing of Mr. David Bowie, and um, I know you were obviously he had a huge influence on you. Um, when I was very young, yeah, when I was. Yeah, at 14, yeah. it hit, you know, the the meteorite came into the <laughs> atmosphere and it was it was very influential. Yeah. That's a whole book, isn't it? That's a whole conversation. It is. And I, I think everybody has their own unique experience of that. But I think he, he set an archetype of some kind and it was beauty in that sense. And uh, that he died, it was his time, obviously. Yeah. And uh, it was stunning. Not only because, I mean, I didn't expect to hear it in the way that I did, and who does? Yeah. But How it, did you find out? Did somebody call you? or My wife was you know, coming out of the bathroom. She said, okay. Peter, I said, yes. What? The, you know, there was a pregnant pause. Of the, uh, 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 she uh, says, yeah. I have to tell you something. I said, yes. And she said, um, somebody very close to us has died. Wow. I said, wait a minute, who is it? So, so like, I went through 
your list. Various family members and mm -hmm. no, no, very oh, and I sort of went, oh, he was very gentle and very, very discreet. And that was the feeling of it. I thought, yeah. and I hadn't, I'd left him alone for a long time. Not only before the time that he established himself as a person mm -hmm. with privacy. Okay. Yeah, okay. You know, for ten years he. I wouldn't say he was a recluse, but he was really being with himself, I think. Yeah, yeah. And not, not. So it's kind of like, I knew that he looked old and there was a quality, but it was very discreet and very yeah. polite in a way. It wasn't loud and it wasn't signalled. Definitely. Which was, which was lovely in a sense. So, and what, so then you, I hadn't heard Black, Black Star or that sort of tour. Yeah. Like, I, it was out. I'd, I'd left album. listening to his records since the 80s. And, yeah. Yeah. But, um, uh, and a lot's been said about the way that he, he and Iman and his whole family sort of uh, handled the discretion of his personal situation and didn't let that kind of overshadow that, that final album, Black Star, that he was trying to put out there. Yeah, I, I, I wouldn't know how to answer that. I mean, it was typically British in that sense. You know, it's very private and not private in, in the sense of uh, withdrawing or being hiding. It was, it was necessarily so. Yeah. And, uh, uh, but what he left was this Black Star video, which was, and uh, Lazarus, which was, yeah. I mean, who, who could go out like that? Yeah. It's kind of, it still is, it's kind of, that's the, the manner in which he arrived. Mm -hmm. The power is the way that he left in, in the public prison mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. as an artist. Yeah. So it was pretty powerful and kind of, a li what I liked about it, Many things I liked about it, but uh, one of the things that I liked about it was the the um, confrontation of mortality and death. And to, there's there's a great spiritual practice to remember death, not in a morbidity, not in, but remember it every day, like that. Face, so face it. To as if you're going to die tomorrow and work as if you're never going to die. Gotcha. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So there was something about that about it. Yeah. And it was heartbreaking too because he, we, you know, we've got an intimate, intimate, intimate relationship with artists that we love, and it was kind of like he was um, with you and talking to you. Definitely, I know me and a lot of my other colleagues here locally. When we found out, we're literally in tears. And that week, we had a David Bowie uh, vinyl party where we spun records yeah. and remembered his legacy. It was a beautiful therapeutic thing. And I know you wrote a very beautiful little. Uh, message about David when he had passed. Mm -hmm. Something about finding out that David um, had your phone number in his phone, um, well, but that you had it's, it's, it's known that I, I met him during yeah. hunger and everything else, yeah. which was great. And uh, it was clear there, there was, a, there was a, a lovely sort of a sense of uh, groundedness about him. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, he did have it in his, you know, he sent a message to me because uh, I called his office years later oh, wow. and I just wanted to say, uh, pay my respects without having any agenda. Yeah. Definitely. Definitely. I said, he was away and then they called me back and he said, you know, he's got your number in his phone. And, yeah. uh, and then he called from Woodstock about me and uh, asked for me and thought that was my home because I was up there working, but I was, I was at home in Turkey at the time. So. That's right, that's right. But they told me he called and uh, I didn't call back because it was kind of, um, that was enough. Uh, that was so lovely of him to do this, but he yeah. didn't. So you don't regret it? I mean, you feel like that was a fitting... No, not at yeah. all. No, not yeah. at all. But the relationship to that, I think um, you, you, know, you sense it's, it's great respect not to want to chase that. Yeah. And I didn't need to, but I wanted to. But, but in terms of uh, like a deeper level of respect was not to inundate him in any way. Gotcha. Gotcha. And not to use his name. You know, and that's beautiful. I, mean, I could yeah. n use his name on many things. He said a lot of things about me, which I'm so happy about. Oh, wow. okay. But I'm not going to use that. Yeah, yeah. I don't need to. No, you don't need to. You don't need to. And I don't know if you're at liberty to, to mention this, but pr pretty public knowledge. I mean, you and David, having been a big fan, but was the first time that you guys really connected when you were involved in the Hunger, Hunger soundtrack? Or had you interacted well, with him before that? I met him, right. and uh, we were doing the shoot. Mm -hmm. Tony Scott, God bless his soul had us into the venue at uh, five in the morning or something. And it's, uh, we were the first shoot. And I realized then that he was very smart because he, just, he was looking for a band to play in the corner somewhere in the background in that scene. And uh, it turned out once he saw I said, that's it. And he realized that what I saw that he captured what I was doing 
as a character and that was what I did it wasn't direct it said just shoot it shoot it like that and of course we were aware that Bowie was going to come in at some point and I could feel it when he entered the room so that was very exciting we're only 24 and it, it was must like, have been surreal to be up there well, performing he's watching me sing you know yeah. so it was great uh, so d during the rest of the day the rest of the band were like like uh, ragging with him about music and yeah. this stuff and like I said just leave him alone and uh, so I stayed in my dressing room and uh, knock 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 and you know, he asked where I was and came to meet me as yeah. which was very kind of him yeah. and he was very, very lovely very much yeah very lovely man wow. beautiful memories but I remember thinking oh god he looks really pasty and there are those teeth yeah, and there are the true. eyes he's not waking me he's yeah. not wearing no and nobody shouldn't have had the teeth done I was thinking all that sort of oh. stuff oh he did he did finally do yeah, do something about that he shouldn't have done the teeth okay it was kind of a signature look. It's like sure, right. getting a contact lens that matches both no, eyes. No, you yeah. don't. Yeah, exactly. You don't do that. <laughs> you don't get your eye corrected. <laughs> yeah, that was nice. You on your website, uh, PeterMurphy.info, often um, use that as a, I don't want to say a forum, but an opportunity sometimes to post links to things, interesting articles. I, I think there was a really interesting article about uh, Islamophobia on CNN that you had, I think, linked to that. It's the internet, really, isn't it? Pretty much, yeah. Which is awful. I think we, we should shut down the internet. <laughs> Final words I, from Peter Murphy. You should put into Google, like, <laughs> shut down the internet or something. Or, actually, somebody told me, if you put in Google, in, into Google search, it, it will collapse the internet. It'll, like, search for itself and go down a yeah. wormhole. Yeah, okay. yeah. People are at home doing everything. <laughs> People do things. It's becoming a virtual world. And one where... where um, social media cannibalism is happening, like small-minded bickering becomes viewed as an important dialogue. Yeah, and it brings out narcissism. I mean, the discretion you mentioned about David Bowie and how the privacy and stuff, I mean, that, you know, that's kind of few and far between in this era of sort of it's selfies so and, yeah. So exposed that it, it's become swamp, it's swamping everything and it's even leaking in, into major news media. Mm -hmm. They're looking like a Facebook page. You know, CNN is like pop news. Like, where's the news? Yeah. All right. Well, the news is here on Internet, Inner Edge Music here with yeah. Peter Murphy. And uh, again, I'm going to let you know, go, Peter, because I know you're real busy. Yeah, really appreciate it. <laughs> okay, okay. Well, again, encourage folks out there to check out this amazing tour. A lot of shows selling out. So definitely check it out, PeterMurphy.info. Again, thank you so much, Peter, for your you're time. Thanks, Thanks, man. Lovely to talk to you. Thank you.